Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about color pickers. Now this may not seem like a very exciting subject, but if you are painting in Photoshop, you're going to be using the color picker a lot. And generally you'll see me using this one. This is the basic color picker. But I want to talk about the alternatives so that you can make an informed decision and use whichever one you like. So what I like about the basic color picker is first that you can assign it to a keyboard shortcut, which means it's here when I need it, I pick my color, and then it's gone. And then when I need a new color, I can pull it up on screen and it's back. In my workflow, that's important. Now it is big, it is somewhat unwieldy, and it has a lot of extra information. So if you don't like that about it, you might want to look at some of the other ones. First, I just want to look at the color panel, which is found under Window, Color. And that's this little one right here. And so immediately you can tell it is small, and that might be good for your workflow. I've set it up to hue, saturation, and brightness, although you can change those sliders to be different if you want. But hue, saturation, brightness seems to be the best for digital painting. So this is nice for making fine tuning to the color you're using. So here I have this purple color. If I wanted to make it a little darker without messing up the hue, I could just move that one slider down a bit. If I wanted to add saturation or remove saturation, it's got its own slider. So this is a very technical, hands-on approach. And the more you understand color, you might think that this is the best. And if you like that, awesome. It's very small, it docks nicely, so this could be your alternative. It does have the downfall of needing to work each slider individually. So while in some cases that might be nice, I like the ability to move on two axes at once. So here I'm both adding to saturation, but also raising brightness. And instead I could just move it diagonally immediately, which is the equivalent of using two different sliders. Now finally here I've got this one called Colorus. This is a third party plugin. The folks from Colorus sent me a copy and it's pretty cool. If you've ever used Corel Painter, this might look very familiar to you. And there's a couple things I like about it, and a couple things that I'm not a huge fan of. I think where this really shines is being able to customize it. You can display it as a triangle or a square, whichever you prefer. You can have a full color gradation, or you can have simple swatches. And when you take any of these individual colors, you can apply them to make swatches down on the bottom, whether you want to have the tints and shades, or here just the sort of lighter values of the same color, that can be handy. And then you can click on each one of those little swatches and paint with it if you like. And this also has nice keyboard shortcuts that allow you to store previous swatches. So it's pretty versatile. The areas it falls a little bit short though are with these color relationships. Now if you remember in uh, the color theory videos I talked about, we used a color wheel. And what that did was it showed different positional relationships to create color schemes. So for instance, colors opposite one another on the color wheel were complementary colors. Well, the problem is, even though this looks like a color wheel, it's not actually arranged in the proper orientation. So for instance, if you were to select red, normally green would be the complement. Well, in this case, you can see red is across from teal, so it's not actually a proper color wheel. So what that means is you would probably not want to use these different color palette arrangements and you'd just want to stick with the basic color, which is fine. Even without that feature, I still think that Colorist is a really awesome color picker. It's also got a nice big interface to manipulate. So if you're working on a Cintiq or maybe a tablet PC, this might be a nice pick as well. I know you're going to be using one color picker. That's not the question. The question is, which one should you use? So I'd really recommend giving all these three a try. Colorus is a download, but it's got a free demo, so it's definitely worth giving a shot. But the fact is, choosing color is an integral part of painting. And the interface that you manipulate that color with is going to have an effect on the way you think about color. So my guess is that one of these three is going to line up best with the way you already think about color. So figure out which one's the right one, and then you're set. Have fun picking colors, guys. Thanks for coming to the site.